Ladies and gentlemen, the self-appointed Purely King is back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. Hopefully, I'll actually be able to get through this video without coughing my guts off like I did in last night's video. But destroy the ever-living Purely King boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button because we have an updated Purely Sprite deck profile for you guys. If you haven't been keeping up with the channel, if you didn't see my last build, uh, I do recommend that you go and check out that one. That's the one I got 29th place with at the Boca Raton, Florida Regional. And what's funny is that I sold this deck and then I turned around and pretty much repurchased all the cards plus a couple extra things based on the top 32 Sprite purely build from uh, Nationals. And I still made profit off of what I sold. So I bought back this deck for cheaper than what I sold it for, which is really funny. So that's a nice little plus. If you didn't see my photo in the community post, out of five packs and a box of Duels Nexus, we pulled one at Purely Noir. Technically, my dad actually pulled it, which was funny. Uh, one of the packs I opened, Purely Shirley's looking me in the face, and then Noir is looking my dad in the face. So very happy to have this. We also pulled Revolution Synchron, some other stuff too. I'll let you all go and check out that photo. But I wanted to show off, now that I actually have the deck totally done, uh, an updated uh, purely sprite deck profile and actually how Noir really impacts this deck moving forward. So if you haven't seen my previous build, I recommend you go and watch that on the channel so that you can see what's changed. Uh, spoiler alert, this is really pretty much based on the top 32 build, but I do feel like that build is a lot better than mine was. So let's go ahead and just dive on into it. So for starters, we're of course playing the three purely three Purely Lily, the three Espeon, and three Umbreon, of course. Uh, so many builds were on two Lily, and I'm so glad to see that the build at Nats was playing three Lily, because it's just so good. Um, I mean, when I was playing uh, three in my previous build, I would side out one when going second, and I think that's actually how I lost at the Boca Raton Regional. If I had a third one, I could have done stuff, but all that besides the point, you want to see these as often as possible, and now with the release of Sleepy Memory, having another name to go into a rank two is very good for your sprite lines. You know, if you're kind of in between a rock and a hard place and you need to get a uh, rank two monster up to special summon out a sprite, it's really helpful. Lily, of course, being an absolute god card in this deck. Yes, it's not an ulti, but I'm not going to pay out the ass just to have this deck max rarity. And then for the hand traps, uh, we're playing three drolls and three ash blossoms. So we were playing imperms, but I feel like moving into a post duelist nexus format i feel that droll is just going to be a lot better than even what it is right now you know you have these synchro synchron good stuff dot decks basically base 2.0 aka badass sexy engine deck you know droll is only going to get better you know the opponent goes tuning to search revolution and mill a card resolution you go droll uh droll can even shut down the meta decks like right now like a, you know against pure purely if they're just playing purely cards you droll them it skips their turn against cash tira it can hurt them depending on how they open Droll is just absolutely fantastic. Um, there is an argument to be made that Imperm is also still very good because, you know, if you Imperm the Junk Speeder, you win. If you Ash the Junk Speeder, you win. But, I mean, if they're playing Synchron Adventure, they're going to have the Griffin Rider up anyway. So I feel like it's just going to be better to if they start doing, you know, searches with the Adventure Engine. You can at least cut them off at the knees with Droll. Um, and, I mean, if, if they Speeder you and, you know, you can't get off your Ash to negate them, then, you know, it, it is what it is at that point. But I also feel like that's only really going to be Tier 2. I don't think that's really going to be Tier 1. I think it's going to be more of the badass, sexy engine stuff that we're going to be seeing and not just pure Synchron. But um, do test around between Droll and Imperm. You might find that you like Imperm more. Uh, there's definitely an argument to be made for both. Now, moving on with the Sprite Engine, uh, we did up the blues from 2 to 3. Uh, you do want to see this uh, early and often. Um, I actually don't remember. Can you summon this if you only have blue up? Yeah, if you control a level or rank 2 monster, you're supposed to all summon this card from your hand. So, yeah, even if you open up double blue, it's not bad. You can also use them as discard fodder so that, you know, you can ditch one off of a purely quick play and then you still have two more in your deck that you're playing with. Or if you brick, you can just go normal summon blue, special summon blue, search. Um, so, yeah, there's... It's definitely like the best sprite, just being able to get your engine going around the world. So, yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to say about it. Then we're playing the one red, uh, the one jet, and the one carrot. This is standard. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we're playing three beaver, and then we up the anglers from two to three. Um, 
I was kind of conflicted on three anglers at first because it's like you don't want to like always see them and multiples can be bricks but like you're playing so many purely quick plays that you know you can ditch it off of a quick play the top 32 build wasn't playing foolish I'm playing foolish because foolish is just a one card engine starter so you can foolish it you can ditch it off of you know sprint a quick play you know whatever so and then you end up siding one out with one beaver when you're going second so uh, and then for the spells playing three sleepy uh, this with the new noir is, is sleepy is just so much better you know this used to basically be kind of a brick of a quick play uh, pre noir now with noir you have a better going second option being able to bounce two cards to the hand or even just being able to set up a rank two with this so that you're able to get off your sprite lines. You know, if you open up this quick play with your sprite cards, then you were kind of dead in the water almost because you had to dig through your deck for like a my friend to get you to another quick play, uh, you know, and then like you would maybe have to sacrifice your at purely happiness just to get a rank two out and then use that to go into sprint with a sprite monster or like at one of your level one purelys and go from there. So being able to have this to at least be able to go into Noir going first, you know, if you don't foresee yourself keeping it on the board for next turn to go into Leap or whatever is really good. Or even just like if you have another quick play, being able to have out the Noir, use the quick play, attach it to the Noir and then set the Leap and, you know, summon out a Sprite and like start doing sprint combos. Like it's very versatile in that regard. Uh, and then we are still on three Pretty Memory because it's good. Uh, three Happy Memory. Three My Friend. Uh, of course, the one delicious, this needs to be a fucking three. Uh, one street, and then we're on the two starters, and then instead of two talents, I'm right now on one talent and whoop, one talent and one foolish burial, and then the one leap and the one double cross. So let's kind of talk about this for a minute. Um, the build from Nationals was on two talents. My reasoning with playing one and one is that if you go into an event like Nationals where you're playing 12 plus rounds, then yeah, you want double talents because you want this to be as live as much as you are able to have it live. But if you're going into like locals where it's like four or five rounds, or you're going into a regional where it's like eight or nine rounds, you know, I feel like you can get away with one talent. You know, if you remember in our previous build, we were on one foolish and one call by, we weren't even playing talents. And that's just because the fact, even when I was testing this at double talents, I would get these hands that it was like, if my opponent didn't activate like an Ash or something, you know, if they just play like an Imperm, I didn't have any gas to play through. So at least with like Foolish and Talents, I have an equal chance to open up either one in a 44 card main deck. I'll admit I don't see the Talents that often, but I mean, even at two copies in a 44 card deck, I didn't see it all that often. And every time that I would open up Foolish or draw into it instead of Talents, I was happy for it to be Foolish because you can just Foolish the Nimble Angler. I wouldn't want to go to 45 and then play two Talents because I feel like at that point, the higher up you go in deck count, you basically then at that point have to forfeit the fact that you're probably never going to hit off of purely. And you can deck then so much with like searching of the sprites and dumping of the angler to go for two beavers and stuff that like you will hit off of the purely once you start going through your deck. Almost kind of makes me want to play Pot of Avarice, but I feel like that that's just sort of insignificant. So I really like one and one. Maybe you'll find you like two uh, talents or maybe you find that you'll like Call by the Grave, but I definitely like one and one. And then of course the double cross being basically a god card and leap being good. We're not playing Shirley because out of all my testing with Shirley, it's basically only good in a pure, purely build because Shirley is only as good as the quick play spells that you already have on a purely exceed monster. So like if you're sitting with a plump with like say a lily and a pretty memory on the plump, then like if you activate Shirley, you could go for beauty to attach pretty memory, but like that's really it. And so it's only as good as the quick plays you have. If you don't have a pretty memory underneath something that isn't beauty, then yeah, you can go like Shirley and get out something, but it doesn't benefit you unless it's quick effect is able to trigger. So like if you have a plump with a pretty memory, yeah, you can make a beauty with a pretty memory, but like if plump doesn't have pretty memory, then like what are you gonna do? Make beauty and attach a sleepy memory? Like you're not doing anything at that point. Like I don't care about drawing cards because I'm playing six hand traps on a 44 card main deck. So it, it just never makes any sense to me. Like this, uh, this is good because it ranks you up and Shirley is good in the pure build because if you have like a happiness up, then yeah, you can like make a Noir. Or like if you have Noir up, then you can go Shirley in the battle phase to make X purely happiness and then swing for a bunch of damage. But 
just with having one and one, I think is fine. You know, you're never really going to be in a situation where you have a plump up with a pretty memory anyway. Cause like at that point I'm probably making beauty instead of plump anyway. Like it, it just seems to so inconsistently come up. It, it was never really worth it. So maybe you'll find different in your testing, but I found for me, Shirley was just really inconsistent and I did not care for it at all. Moving on to the extra deck. We are of course playing the Two copies of Plump. I'm still on two because this card is disgusting. Um, I don't like Mannequin Cat in this. Um, Plump is just nuts. Being able to get multiple materials, uh, draw multiple cards off of Sleepy, have a fat-ass Noir up. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we're also on the two Beauties because this is an Effect Bailer. It's really good. Uh, the One Happiness for OTKing because it's good. The brand new Noir. This I've had people tell me that this thing's like a custom card, and honestly, it is. I don't like the fact that you can't bounce cards to the opponent's hand as a quick effect. That kind of makes it a bit lackluster. But still, to be able to have it be a quick effect, to be able to set multiple purely traps is good. Um, it, this does come up a lot more than you think, but it also kind of makes the deck a bit more complicated because you have to think in advance on your lines. Like, okay, am I going to go into a Noir instead of like a Beauty and end on this board? Or if I do Beauty, I can end on this board and have an extra interruption with the Beauty. So sometimes it's better instead of going for the Noir and playing an extra quick play spell to set the trap, sometimes it's better to just forego the straight purely street or the my friend and just summon Lily, set the trap, and then go like pretty memory lines to make a beauty and just have extra interruption. Or worst case, if you don't open optimally, then you use sleepy memory with a purely to make Noir to have a rank two up so that you can do sprint lines. Really, really good card though. Uh, and then we're playing two copies of the fat ass Noir. Uh, one Gigantic because it's good. One to Gym Buster because it's insane. Um, I'm testing Kiki Nagashi right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kiki Nagashi is good if you brick on two level ones. If you remember, we were originally playing Underworld Goddess with Mascarena. I, I don't know if I really want to go back to that because with decks now having access to things like Revolution Synchron, I don't really want to be ending on things that can just be affected by like you know even dark ruler like at least with this even if i don't open optimally or if i just have extra gas and i can have kiki nagashi plus a full board seems really good especially because a lot of decks from nationals were main decking dark ruler and dark ruler plus evenly match going into post duels nexus is going to be disgusting so i feel like kiki nagashi is just going to be amazing to help get you to that next turn especially if the opponent just hand traps you out the wazoo and you're just like all right well i'm going to sit on a kiki nagashi and guarantee i get to next turn unless they kaiju me which i haven't been seeing kaijus at all and like we've cut santa claus entirely because like santa claus is good but you know if the opponent king calamities you it's like you can't even do anything anyway uh so then we're playing the one downer the double zeus and then the Sprint, still really good. Um, yeah, so not not much to say there. Everything else is pretty standard in the extra deck. Side deck, this is all still in the works. <coughs> Excuse me, still trying to get over my cold. All this is still in the works, so take it with a grain of salt. This is just kind of things I'm thinking about. One Red Resonator, the top 32 build didn't play this. you got to have a way to win in time. Like with my terrible luck in this game, I'm going to be going into time. Whether it's because my opponent's trying to stall me or just because our games take too long. Uh, so you've got to play Resonator. Uh, I'm unsure of Bells. I don't know if Branded's really going to be that big of an issue because this deck already has such an amazing Branded matchup. So I'm, I'm undecided on the Bells. Uh, and then, of course, the one Feather Duster, Double Cosmic, Labyrinth, and Eradicators and all that are going to be a bitch until they get banned. Uh, three copies of Dark Ruler. I thought like this is going to be necessary moving into post Duels Nexus. Same goes for Evenly Match. Dark Ruler plus Evenly Match is still an amazing way to kill a board. Like, you don't need many cards in your opening hand going second to have gas. Like, if you open up Dark Ruler plus Evenly and, like, Foolish Burial and other stuff, like, you have full combo. Like, you're, you're going to win. Uh, and then last but not least, I swapped out D-Barriers for Anti-Spell. So you're probably thinking, why are you playing Anti-Spell with so many spells? Because once you're set up, like, this can just win you the game. You know, if you're set up with, on average, six to seven interruptions is what I'm ending on, whether it's hand traps or negates on board, the opponent draws for turn, you hit them with Anti-Spell, this completely shuts them down out of Dark Ruler, which is like basically the main way that the opponent has to kill your board after game one if they're not main decking it. And so 
you know, if they dark ruler you normally, in like a normal circumstance, you don't have the anti spell. It's like, okay, I still got double cross and leap to at least have some sort of interactions with you. But with anti spell, like, <clears throat> unless they have something like Cosmic Cyclone, which I don't think that decks are really going to be side decking that on this, because it's like you play so many quick play spells, it's like, what are they going to Cosmic? Like, my friend purely? Sure, like, I don't care. So having the anti spell is just so damn good. Like, I'm really happy with how this has been performing. So guys, that is my purely deck profile. I'm not gonna show any combos here because I already have a combo video on my channel. And like having a purely noir in the extra deck doesn't really change the combo lines all that much. Like all it really amounts to is if you, basically if you open up two quick plays plus say like a nimble angler, then you have full combo plus like you can set the trap off of the noir. But like that's not any different from like a typical line where you open up you know, two quick plays and an angler pre-noir. So, like, if you've seen my Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth how to play this deck, then learning this deck and playing this build is not going to be difficult. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know what I can change on the side. I'm still conflicted on some things, like I said. But, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.